Yes, indeed, folks. You're listening to Blue Please. You're on CynicalBrit.com with myself, Total Biscuit. So we've been talking about various things, and I was happy to be a little bit positive about how I see Cataclysm coming. However, Wrath of the Lich King, I will happily say, is by far... Well, I say happily. I'm never happy when Blizzard screws up, because that affects everybody, myself included. And a funny thing is that a lot of people seem to think that I want the downfall of Blizzard. No, I don't! How could I have a WoW podcast without Blizzard? That would be terrible! Wouldn't even work! <sighs> Absolutely disgraceful. I want Blizzard to, to succeed. It's in all of our best interests. Really, it is. So. There is one thing that I would like to look at. I don't really know why they released this, honestly. It tells me basically nothing. Every now and again, they put out something called a battle plan. And this battle plan is supposed to tell you where they've gone and where they're going and give out a bit of information as to that effect. Unfortunately, they seem to have forgotten to do that. It has nothing, absolutely nothing of any use whatsoever in this particular post. But let's try and make it useful, try and make it interesting anyway. So... All that was really said that was of any great note was something about them upgrading their databases. Whoopity frickin' do, who cares, nobody, simple as that. It is not remotely interesting. But they did mention quite a bit about the history of Wrath and how things have been going with that. And they went through all the way to present day. And I have to wonder why. I mean, do you really want to celebrate that? I mean, half of Wrath was awful, honestly. Pretty much considered to be the worst expansion that they've ever put out. Admittedly, there's only been two of them in terms of WoW. But this... Uh, why celebrate it? I, I don't get it. Why why celebrate Wrath of the Lich King of all things? Why not just do what I thought they were doing anyway? Which was simply to just go forward and say, We're just going to forget about this. You know, we're just going to completely and totally forget about... Wrath of the Lich King, we don't care, we're going to look forward to Cataclysm, because, honest guys, it's going to be better, really, this is going to be the thing that brings you back. I mean, surely that's what you want to be doing, I would think. But, apparently not. <laughs> Evidently, they would quite like to dwell on the mysteries of the past, talk about Wrath of the Lich King. I don't know why. Right, so let's have a look at Wrath of the Lich King. Let's have a look at the start of Wrath of the Lich King. What was good, what wasn't? Well, first things first. Raids. God. <laughs> Raiding at the start of Wrath, ladies and gentlemen. Good lord. Absolutely appalling. So here's what they have to say about it. From the moment of entry into Northrend, the story began to play out and the heroes of Azeroth were asked to take on the challenge the Lich King and the Scourge presented them. Players were able to experience Naxxramas as a level 80 dungeon and face down another old god Yogg-Saron in Old War. In order to better prepare for the trials facing them in Icecrown, the Argent Crusade set up camp in Icecrown to hold the tournament to, hold the Az to hone the Azeroth's finest heroes into a force the Lich King couldn't afford to ignore. That's all they want to say about it. Yeah, about a line per each. Nax Ramus. Big disaster or biggest disaster? You decide. Pretty freaking awful disaster one way or the other. That's all I can say about it. A joke. A, a... What is it? I can't remember the quote. It's so stupid. A joke played upon their creations by their own creators. Something something Ken. Something something Barbie. Ugh. Death Whisper. Worst voice actor. Yeah, you can put that down as a black mark in Cataclysm. The woman who voiced Death Whisper... Death... That, 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 try again. Death Whisper and Sindra Goza. Please don't give that woman any money ever again. Lord, I don't know what she was playing at. And whoever wrote her lines. Ah ha ha, wow. Anyway, Naxxramas, awful. Maz... Masrigo is an awful server, honestly. But Malagos... All right. Not terrible. However... Malagos was the first example of a vehicle fight within a raid. Now, there was another vehicle fight, and that was, of course, in the Oculus. Isn't it odd? Maybe it's not. That people consider Oculus to be the worst five-man. And people also consider the third phase of Malagos to be freaking awful. Hmm. What does that give the indication of exactly, Blizzard? Tell me. 
why did you think these vehicles were a good idea? Especially in a raid environment. People hated these damn things, and I can't exactly blame them. So I would consider that to be something of a failure. Now, the vehicle mechanics were evolved for Old War, and they made things a little bit more interesting. Thankfully, they were only used in one fight. And that is also a good thing indeed. There were no vehicles in Ice Crown, with the exception of the abomination that you possess in Professor Putricide. I suppose you can count that as a vehicle, as compared to the same mechanics. You can't really count the airship battle. That was something different. But overall, vehicles, I have to say, outside of leveling content, have been pretty much a disastrous failure for Blizzard. Nothing really to be proud of there. And it's funny that you don't really hear any mention of vehicles for Cataclysm. That's not part of the marketing at all. Funny that. I can't imagine why they wouldn't mention a much derided, much decried, and much disliked mechanic from Wrath of the Lich King. However... There were good things from the first tier of raiding. The first official hard mode was implemented in the form of Sartharian. And it paved a wonderful, wonderful path for the future. Or so we thought. Sartharian, a binary hard mode. You could try it with no one, two, or three drakes. It would yield different rewards. The top one considered to be the only hard encounter in the entirety of tier 7. And indeed the only one that held up any guild of any repute for more than... An hour was, of course, Sotharian Three Drakes in both 10 and 25 man mode. Also, one of the only encounters to demonstrate that 10 man hard modes could be as hard, if not harder, in fact, than the 25s. That, again, very important. That's something that did not exist back in Burning Crusade, which introduced two of those 10 man dungeons. Zolomon and Karazan. Neither of those dungeons had something that was sufficiently challenging to say, hey, 10-man stuff's kind of hard too, right? And even pre-nerf Karazan wasn't a candle on pre-nerf Grawl. And certainly not pre-nerf Macferidon. Those are two important things to take from Wrath. The, those are the things that I hope that they look at and bring into Cataclysm. The problem is that they decided to phase out these non-binary hard modes in favour of binaries. And of course, the prime example of that is another terrible instance. Yep, all of the odd tiers in Wrath are awful. Yeah, really bad. All of the even tiers are good, well, to some degree. And Ulduar, I think most people can agree, is the crowning glory of raiding within Wrath of the Lich King. A large, innovative dungeon with a lot of different mechanics, really cool story, the environment particularly awesome. Again, a little bit too big in my opinion, and I've said before, and I can say it again a thousand times until I'm red in the face. I believe dungeons should not be that long anymore. They should be split into smaller dungeons, at least just to provide a change of scenery. Because being in that dungeon and having the only, only dungeon on that tier is bad. And there's another example of something that absolutely ruined Wrath raiding for me in a really big way. It took me down to a casual level, because I only want to raid casually because I can't stand the look of these places. One instance per tier. Really. Now there's the odd example of say, oh, well there's VOA. Well, we don't count that. Oh, there's an Ixia. We don't count that either, because that's a dumb gimmick that we've seen a thousand times already. Aside from tier 7, at this point in time, there uh, just nothing else. There's nothing else on the other tiers. There's nothing else on tier 8, nothing else on tier 9, nothing else on tier 10. There's something coming on tier 10, but that's a little bit too late, isn't it? This idea of single dungeon tiers is awful and should be horribly abandoned. Thankfully, that looks like what, what they're doing in Cataclysm. They've realized that that's a bad thing, and they have got four raid dungeons ready for launch. Two sixes, a four, and a one. To me, that says that they have an opportunity to launch with two tiers of content at release and still have reasonable sets. I mean, say, for instance, you could have a six and a four, or indeed, a, have a, one of the sixes and a one and one of the sixes and a four. And maybe the six and a one as the first tier of content and the six and a four as the second tier. There's a lot of options there, honestly. Abandoning the single tier raid system is... In, in my opinion, extremely important for keep, keeping people interested in raiding. It's not good. Now, I would also like to see non-binary hard modes brought over to Cataclysm, but I don't see that happening again, just because Blizzard has come out and said, we think this is the best way. 
They're wrong, <laughs> incidentally, and the reason they're wrong is because no sane player wants a game that only has two difficulty modes, easy and hard. Because if someone wants to play in the middle, someone wants to play normal, or maybe a bit hard, or slightly easier, they should have that option. What we're talking about is a stratification of the player base in a way that is not good. A very strict and very drawn apart stratification. You've got a block up here of the elite guys that do the 25-man heroic stuff. Which constitute, oh, not an awful lot. I think it's something like 1% to 2% of the rating player base max, according to guildprogress.com. And then you've got all these guys that can only do the normal stuff, and then you've got this big block in the middle. Now, some might argue, oh, it's fine. You can just do normals, then do hards. No, it's not fine. You have to make a massive leap, and you're also asking people... And this is another thing I want to see gone, quite frankly. To play normals in order to do hards, for God's sake, balance it in a way that allows us to do hards from the start. I think mean, gear dependence should not be that much of a factor when you're dealing with hard modes, honestly. You should not have to prep for hard modes by doing normals. It's like saying, oh, you as a player of a game, you're going to play the easy mode in order to play the hard mode. I hate it when games do that. It's awful. But in this case, it's more of, you got to play easy to play the hard, but there's no normal that you could do in the meantime that might be a bit challenging for you. I mean, the difficulty level of ICC is all over the place, but it comes down to the fact that I would have preferred to start on hard modes, make slower progress through that, and feel a genuine amount of accomplishment from killing that stuff, rather than mucking about on easy. So, this pseudo-attunement... This idea that you've got to attune to hards by doing normals, get rid of that, just go away with that. that. That's a bad idea. It serves no practical purpose. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You got rid of attunements for one reason, to let people fail on their own terms. Not to restrict people. I mean, this is one of the things that I hated from TBC. So why bring it back in some kind of stealth format? Get rid of that for Cataclysm. Let people start with heroics, heroic modes from the very start. Now what else? Bad things from Wrath. Five-man dungeons. Absolutely appalling. A huge step back from TBC. Some interesting stuff, but overall, too freaking easy. And therein lies the problem. It sounds like I'm beating a dead horse. A dead horse, you say? Yes, indeed. Beating a dead, retarded horse over this particular issue. But it's true. Everyone accepts that it's true. The heroic five-mans are AoE fests. They're awful. Now, LFD was brought in, which, for, quite frankly, was designed for one reason alone, to get people back into these things, because no one wanted to do them anymore, because they, are, they suck, they're terrible. So it's like, here's badges, here, shove all of that stuff on there as well. And another thing, oh, there's so many bad things about Wrath, I'm sorry, I've got very little positive to say about this particular expansion. The idea of giving people all of this gear through badges that they clearly have not earned is ridiculous, and I say it right here if you are not a raider you don't need raid gear if you want i said it in a thread and someone actually reacted badly to this and it was in a thread whereby someone was complaining that malagos was too hard yes i kid you not too hard for the weekly they wanted it taken out because people didn't know what to do and my response is this if you can't do tier 7 content you don't deserve tier 10 items which is what you get from doing the weekly stuff you get those frost badges which can be traded in for that that needs to go, quite frankly. If you want to gear up alts in an easy manner, then what you've got to do is you have to ensure that there is some kind of BOA system that allows you to donate gear down to your other alts that you have legitimately earned. I'm fine with that. It's like you phase out all of this gear anyway, just give it as hand-me-downs, things like that. Now, one other thing that I would really like to see happen is changes made to earlier tier dungeons. And by dungeons, I'm talking about raids. Who the hell runs Naxxramas outside of the weekly? Nobody. Absolutely nobody. So, a new player doesn't get to experience any of this content. This content is obsolete to a lot of these guys. Nobody runs Old War anymore. No one runs Naxxramas anymore. Very few people run TOC. Because, of course, you don't need to. You can get all of the gear that you need to start ICC by running five mans. That is a disgrace. Why abandon the content? I've always been a proponent of somehow 
allowing people to get some benefit from raid dungeons, even if they're below level. I mean, I had an idea about getting leveling groups into raid dungeons in order to level up. Has that happened? Well, no, not really. Variation is required on older raid content in order to get people back into it. Some kind of incentive to make sure the new players get to have a bash at it. As to what that is, well, that's for Blizzard to come up with. I'm sure I can come up with something by next week's show. My name is Tall Biscuit. You're listening to Blue, please. And I have the illusion of choice coming up right after this break. I'll be right back. Enjoy. <laughs> 